Hello everyone. Welcome to the second lesson of the Crow Panel Pico HMI display tutorial. In this session, I'm going to show you how to draw arbitrary shapes and display text on the Crow Panel board. Before we dive in, there's something important to note. The display drivers for the 2.4 inch, 2.8 inch, and 3.5 inch boards are provided by the TFTSPI library. However, this library does not support the 4.3 inch display, which will instead use a display driver provided by the Picket V library. Therefore, I'll split this video into two parts. In the first part, I'll use a 2.4 inch board to demonstrate how to use the TFTESPI library. And in the second part, I'll switch to a 4.3 inch board to showcase the Pico V library. Let's get started with the demonstration. First, open the code folder in the course materials and locate the code used for the second lesson. Open it. If you're unsure where to download the course materials, you can find the download link in the description of this video. I've included all the codes, materials, and tools required for the course in there. Once you've opened the code, you'll notice that it includes header files for the TFTESPI library. Therefore, you need to install the TFTFPI library to use it. Click on Sketch, Find Include Library, and then click on Manage Libraries to open the Library Manager. Here, search for TFTSPI. By default, the latest version will be selected. All you need to do is click on Install. After installing the TFTSPEI library, you'll need to configure it. This library is incredibly powerful supporting numerous screens, but you must inform it about the specific screen you're using and some hardware details for it to function correctly. Click on File, then Open Preferences. The path displayed here is where the Arduino IDE stores libraries, which I'll refer to as the Libraries Directory. Copy this path and navigate to it in your File Explorer. Once inside the Libraries Directory, You'll see I've installed various libraries for different functions over time. Locate the TFTESPI library folder and open it. Inside, you'll find a configuration file named User Setup H. This is where you'll make changes to inform the TFTFPI library about your board's hardware details. However, I recommend a simpler approach using my pre configured files. I've placed these files in the file folder within the course materials. You can find the configuration file for your specific board, copy it, and paste it into the TFTISPI library folder, replacing the original user setup H file. Then, let me first turn this on and explain to you how the internal configurations are determined based on the hardware information. Firstly, we come across the first uncommented macro definition, which serves to inform the TFTESPI library that the display driver chip I'm using for my 2.4 inch board is Island 1341. Keep in mind, different boards utilize varying screens, hence the display driver chips also differ. For instance, a 2.8 inch screen typically employs the ST7789 chip. Now, if we open the user setup file for a 3.5 inch display, we'll see that it utilizes the ILI9488 chip. Of course, besides configuring the display driver chip, we also need to set up the pin information for the screen. Let's scroll down further. Here's the section where we specify the pin information for the screen. To do this accurately, we'll need to refer to the board's schematic diagram. I've included the schematics for each board size in the file folder of the course materials. Let's open the schematic diagram for the 2.4 inch board and locate the section related to the screen. In the user setup file, the MISO pin for the screen is specified first. Now, locate the MISO pin on the schematic. As you can see, it's indeed connected to GPIO12 of the PICO chip. Next is the MOSI pin, which you can similarly identify and confirm within the schematic. And there's the SCLK pin, GPOTEN, which is also correct. 
Additionally, the CS pin for the display screen, as well as the remaining DC pin, RST pin, and BL pin can all be found corresponding to their respective pins in the schematic diagram. Lastly, we have the CS pin for the touchscreen. That concludes the pin-related configurations. Next, scroll down to locate the TFTSPI support macro and uncomment it. This macro is crucial. Without enabling it, the screen will only display a white screen. All right, only one item left. Scroll up to find this setting related to backlight. You need to uncomment it. The backlight setting for the board matches the default here, which is high level to activate. Therefore, no modifications are necessary. At this point, the entire user setup file has been configured. Remember to save your changes before closing it. Now, let's head back to the Arduino IDE and dissect the code together. Here, I've defined a pin for the LAD utilizing GPIO5 on the board, just like we connected it in the previous lesson. If you're still unclear about why it's connected like this, feel free to revisit the content from the first lesson. Next, I've declared an instance from the TFTESPI library. This allows us to manipulate the screen, for instance, in the setup function. I've used the begin function to initialize the screen and the set rotation function to set the orientation of the display. Before that, I also initialized the LAD pin. Moving on to the subsequent code, there's an initialization for touch directions as well. But since we're focusing on display functionality in this lesson, we won't delve into the touch aspects. After everything's initialized, we proceed to draw graphics on the screen. First, I'll use the fill screen function to display the screen in full screen mode, alternating between red, yellow, blue, green, and black every second. Following that, I utilize functions for drawing circles, triangles, and rectangles to create a small house and a sun on the screen. Then, I'll set the font for text and print the desired text at a specified location. After completing the drawing, I'll print a prompt message through the serial port. Lastly, in the loop function, I'll make the LED blink continuously to indicate that the board is functioning normally. Since my drawing is relatively simple, the code won't be very long. If you want to use additional functions for drawing, you can click on Sketch, open the Library Manager, navigate to the TFTESPI Libraries Installation section, click More Info, which will open the TFTESPI Libraries GitHub page. Here, open Keywords, Text and you'll find all the function names provided by the TFTFTAIPEI library, enabling you to create even more visually appealing interfaces. Now, let's take a look at the display after uploading the code to the board. Click on Tools, then Board. If you're using a 2.4, 2.8, or 3.5 board, select Raspberry Pico. However, for a 4.3 board, Choose Elec Row Crow W Panel RP2040DVI. Once selected, connect the board to your computer using a USB-C cable. Then, click Tools again, and under Port, select the serial port corresponding to your board. Finally, click Upload. Since this isn't my first time uploading code, the board automatically handles entering the download mode. When the upload is complete, if the board doesn't reset automatically, you can manually press the reset button to see the result. Here's my drawing. It's quite simple, but I encourage you to give it a try yourself. All right, that concludes our demonstration using the TFTESPI library for 2.4, 2.8, and 3.5 displays. Next up, I'll showcase how to draw any image using the PicaV library on a 4.3 display. First things first. Open your course materials and locate the code for the 4.3 display from Lesson 2. Open it up. If you're unsure where to download the course materials, take a look at the course materials download link in the video's description. Once the code is loaded, the first thing you need to do is install the PicaV library, which the code relies on. Click on Sketch, then Find and click Manage Libraries to open the Library Manager. In the search bar, type PicaV. There should be only one result. Click Install. 
It might prompt you that this library has additional dependencies that need to be installed. To avoid any compilation errors, I recommend selecting Install for those dependencies as well. Alright, once installation is complete, close the Library Manager. Now, notice that there's also a header file called Touch A included here. This file provides the Touch Driver interface for the board. Open it and scroll down. This section contains the driver interface code that needs to be configured based on the board's hardware information. The touch chip is Git 911, and I've, I've already configured the driver interface here. The pins used can be found in the circuit diagram of the 4.3-inch board, and you can confirm them in the same way I demonstrated for the 2.4-inch board earlier. I won't go into detail about that again. Continuing down, you'll see that this touch file includes the header file for JIT 911. So you'll also need to download and install the GT911 Touch Driver library. However, since this library can't be found directly in the Arduino IDEA, you'll need to manually download and install it. Open the course materials, and in the file folder, you'll find library gut 911 text. I've placed the download link for this library inside that text file. Open the link in your browser and download the library. Once downloaded, open the compressed file. You need to extract the files from the compressed folder into your Arduino libraries directory to complete the installation. If you're unsure of the path to your Arduino libraries directory, in the Arduino IDA click file, then preferences. The path to your Arduino libraries directory will be listed there. Copy it and navigate to that location. Open the Libraries folder, and you'll see all the already installed libraries stored there. Now simply copy the library you want to install into this folder. And that's it. Installation complete. By now, all the necessary libraries have been installed. Let's open the Arduino IDE and proceed with the code below. Here, we use a class provided by the PicketV library to declare an instance named Display, which is used to control the screen display. Moving on to the setup function. Within it, we first initialize the serial port. Then, we initialize the GPIO pins. GPO28, which is used in this example, is connected to an LAD module and serves to control the LAD. In the loop function, I toggle the state of the LAD every second, serving as an indication that the board is functioning properly. As for GPIO24, it's the pin that controls the backlight. Only when it's set to a low level will the backlight turn on. Next up, we're diving into the specifics of drawing on the screen. First, initialize the display with the begin function, then set the orientation of the screen using the set rotation function. Following that, we'll change the background color from black to green. Adding a delay in between will make the transition more noticeable. After that, we'll print hello electro on the screen. Once the drawing is complete, we'll print a specified text through the serial port. Since I've already used several functions to draw a house and a sun in the previous 2.4-inch demo, I'll keep it simpler for the 4.3-inch display. You can apply the 2.4-inch methods to create your desired graphics on the 4.3-inch screen. After coding your drawing, click on Tools, Select Board, and choose Electro Crow Panel RP2040 DVI. This is crucial for the 4.3-inch board to ensure compatibility. Then connect the board to your computer using a USB-C cable. Once connected, click Upload to send the code. If your board doesn't reset automatically after uploading, you can manually press the reset button and you'll see your creation come to life. Doesn't it seem straightforward? So, grab your board and get started. I'm confident you can create graphics that are many times more stunning than mine. All right, that's all for this lesson. If you find this video helpful, please remember to subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified of every new video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.